In this lab, we want to create a hand tool and then determine the amount of crimping force that we have here at the jaws with a given input force by hand at various locations along the handle depending on where we hold the, the tool. You may have a need for a specialized tool that you can't go down to the local hardware store or big box store or even on Amazon and purchase that specialized tools. You, you need it for just one job, an assembly job that you do in-house at your manufacturing plant. And so let's look at how to set up this tool and then we will run an analysis where we put an input force at a particular location and we graph the output force, the crimping force at the jaws. So let's look at how to set all of this up. The first thing you need to do when doing any design is make sure that your document units are correct. In this case, I'm going to use inch units and so I'll change my document to inch. Now, if all you ever do is inch, you can set your default to inches, or if you only ever use millimeters, or you only use centimeters, you could set that as your default document units. But I set my units, and then I'm going to insert a canvas, and I'll put that canvas on the XY plane the image, and I'm going to put the canvas opacity up to 100%, and then I'll look at that image and so I have a hand-drawn artwork. Uh, this comes from the book Machine Design by Robert L. Norton. I will put the ISBN number in the comments. That will give you a reference to the calculations, the formulas uh, for analyzing this mechanism. But we have a hand-drawn art and we'll use this art as a rough guide, not something that's set in stone. But I have a distance from here to here, and all of the distances for this linkage is given in the book. And so I'm going to go to that canvas, and I'll right click on the canvas and select Calibrate. And then I'm going to select a point about in the middle of that hole. And I'll come down here, I'll select about in the middle of that hole. And I want to make that distance 2.375, 2.375. And that will scale up our image or scale down if necessary uh, to the correct size. I then want to move this point to a logical location. I'll turn on the origin and this handle rotates about this point right here. This point also stays in the same location as this component rotates. I think a logical location would be this point right here. So I'm going to right click and I'll say edit that canvas. I'll drag this plane such that that circle is in the middle of that hole. Now we don't have to worry about getting an exact because again this is just artwork. It's hand drawn artwork. We'll say OK to that. And then we'll create a component to start our first sketch. So I'll do new component and I'm going to call this component handle dash anvil. And I'm going to then turn off the assembly origin and I'll make sure the handle anvil is my active component. I'll turn on that origin. I'll right click on the XY plane. I'll tell it to create a new sketch. Now we don't actually need to see that origin. We know that it's right here, so I'll just hide that. And I'll draw a circle at this origin, and I'm going to dimension that circle 0.332. I'm going to draw a line from this circle down to about here, and the length of that line will be 2.375, 2.375. I'm then going to draw a circle at the end of this line and I'll make this circle equal to this circle up here. So let's dimension from here to here and that vertical height. Uh, let's do that as 1.8. Okay, so I like that. And we'll, if we decide to move that up later, we can move that up uh, later. And then I'm going to finish this sketch and I'm going to start a new component. And so I'll come up and I'll say uh, create a new component 
and I'm going to name this component handle dash lever and then I will start a new sketch on the XY plane of this component and I'm going to again draw a circle at the origin and I'll make that circle 0.332 then I'm going to draw a line over uh, horizontally and I'll make that distance 0.735 I'll draw a circle at the end of this line and I'll make this circle equal to the previous circle and I want to make sure that I don't get the projected of the handle anvil so I turn that off temporarily and then I will create a linkage from here to here and so I'm going to finish this sketch I will create a new component and I'm going to call this component link plate so I'll call that link plate and I'm going to then go to the XY plane of this component and I'll create a new sketch. I'm going to draw a circle at this point right here, 0.332. And I'll uh, draw a line from here over to here. And we'll get the dimension for that line in a second. I'll draw a circle from here to here. I'll make these two circles equal to each other. This circle equal to this circle. I'll dimension the length of this line, the aligned length of that, as 1.2875. Now I can leave this uh, sketch unconstrained for the moment, but I know that other than position these two dimensions would define with the equal between these arcs would define the distance between those points and so I'll finish this sketch and I will then create a new component and I'm going to name this as press plate I will start a new sketch on the press plate XY plane and I'm going to draw a line from about here down to about here. Let's turn off the visibility of the previous component. I'll draw a circle 0.332 at this end and I'll draw a circle at this end. And then we need to do the aligned length of this linkage. And let's do that distance as uh, 1.55. All right, let's finish that sketch. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the canvas for a moment. And I'm going to turn on the visibility of the other components. And I want the handle anvil to be grounded. Now, I could do this in two different ways. I could either do a rigid group between the handle anvil and the top level of the assembly, or I could just right click and, and ground that handle anvil. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to ground that. So that is the linkage from here to here. And then I'm going to move this linkage over here. I'll move this linkage over here. And I, I want to put a joint between this component and this component. So I'll do J for joint. And I'm going to select uh, this circle. And then I'll the, underneath that circle is the component for this grounded component. And let's do that again. So right now, we see both of these components. Remember, this first one is grounded. There's two circles over top of each other. So I'll do J for join. This grounded component becomes grayed out so we can't select it. When I select a circle on this component the grounded component now becomes visible and I can select the circle on the grounded component and I want that to be a revolution or revolute joint and so we see our motion for that linkage. I then want to do a joint between this circle and again this one's grayed out because it's grounded between this circle and this circle 
and I want that to be a revolute joint and I'll accept that and then I'll do J for join and I will select this circle and this circle and we'll say okay to that and I may want to move these apart so that I can clearly see this but I'll select this circle I need to do J for joint I'll select this circle and there's a second circle there so this one grays out after the first pick and I'll select that one and you see the revolution joint Now if we expand the joints folder and we go to the uh, revolution one joint and I'll do drive joint if I drag this joint we see that the mechanism moves now let's turn the canvas back on so that we can uh, see so as this handle goes down this would go up or as the handle goes up this will go down and so I'm going to uh, rotate around this pivot point so I'll go to drive joint and so as I drag this we see that that's going to go up or um, down and so we can set up the motion of our mechanism before we have created any virtual geometry other than the rough layout skeleton or free body diagram of our mechanism so now we'll continue on and uh, create the additional components so I'm going to hide the uh, components except for the handle anvil and we'll uh, start to model that component so I'll uh, make sure that the handle anvil is active and I'm going to go back and I'll edit the sketch one and I'm going to change this line to construction so I'll click X or hit X on the keyboard to change that to construction and then I'm going to draw a line about here up to about here and I'll come up to about here I'll click and drag an arc to about here and then I'll come over to about here and then I'll come down uh, vertically so our metal component will be underneath of this plastic handle uh, coming over something like that and again the the artwork is just for reference uh, so you know this line in the artwork wasn't collinear with that line but it would be easier to make that uh, as one straight line across there so let's turn off the canvas and we'll add some dimensions to this geometry I think I'll make this point horizontal to that point so I'll do horizontal this point to this point I'll then dimension the distance from here to the origin and we need to determine or make a decision on what dimension we want for that let's do this as 3.25 and then I'll dimension from this point to the origin that vertical height and let's do that as 0.525 and I will dimension the radius of this arc let's do that as 2.8 and I want to make sure that this arc is tangent to that line so I'll do tangent between this arc and this line and then make sure this line is either perpendicular to uh, this line or horizontal and then I'll dimension the vertical height from here to the origin as 1.165 I'll dimension from the origin over to this point and let's do that as 7.025 I'll dimension the length of this line and let's do that as 6.325 we see that all of this geometry turns black I still have a white dot here I'll dimension that distance as 0.325 and so I've got the starting portions of that geometry fully defined and then if I go back to the canvas next I need to put a spline going across here 
So I'm going to create several points to define that spline. So I'm going to do a, a sketch point, and I'll do one about right here. I'll do one about right here, one about right here, and one here, and one here. So where I have a large change in shape, I put more points, and then where there's a less, a more gradual curve, I put fewer points. One of the mistakes that beginners do is they tend to put too many points on their splines. And so you want to use as few points as possible to define your spline. Now this point down here, the black point, is the center of this arc and then these white points we need to define those the location of those white points that we just uh, put in here this and so I'm going to dimension the distance the horizontal distance from here over to here and I'll do that distance as 4.08 and I'll do the vertical distance from here to here and let's do that as 0.705 and I'll dimension the horizontal distance from here to here as 6.525 I'll dimension the vertical distance from here to here and I'll do that distance as 1.665 and I'll dimension the horizontal distance from here to here and let's dimension that distance as 7.83 and for the vertical dimension I think I'll put it over here on this side so from here uh, up to here let's do that distance as 2.935 and I'll dimension the vertical distance from here to here and let's do that as 3.65 and dimension the horizontal distance from here from this point back to this point and I'll do that as 9.89 and I'll dimension the horizontal distance from this one to this one and we'll do that is 8.9 and then the vertical distance from here up to here and let's do that as 3.65 3.565 I'm gonna rearrange these dimensions and make sure that I've I've got what I intended so this this distance to the uh, center of that arc and I think what I'm going to do and actually this distance I didn't get what I intended in for that dimension but I'm going to delete that dimension make this one horizontal with that point so I'll do horizontal this point with this point now later on a year from now or whenever it would be difficult to understand that these three points are in a line so I'm going to put a, a line across here uh, that I can clearly see that and I'll change that to construction and so now I can visually see that these three points are all in a straight line but that will give me a visual indication of where the position of this point and this point are lined up with this dimension point the 1.8 distance and I'll go through and I'll look at my other dimensions and make sure that I have dimensions that make sense to me. Um, it wouldn't make sense to have a dimension that was going out to eight decimal places. Do dimensions that can actually be measured with calipers, uh, that can be actually manufactured. And I might even round off some of these dimensions to two decimal places instead of three decimal places. And now I'm going to draw my curve going across here. And so I'll do a spline, a fit point spline. And I'll go from here to here to here, 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 and back up to this line. And I'll select that. Now I want to make this curve tangent to this line right here. So I'll do tangent, I'll select this curve, and I'll select this line, add that tangent constraint. 
So that completes my sketch. I'm now ready to create some solid model geometry. So I'll uh, go to the solid commands. I'll do extrude. I'll select that profile and I want to go symmetric total distance of 0.125. And so we'll say okay to that. And if I compare that to my original canvas, so we have that part going across here and then we need to put a cut in here and we need to put a slot where this will move up and down over in this location. 